Hi, I'm Charles with Anycap. The story begins with our absolute loser of a protagonist named Yuki, complaining about having to clean up every morning at school. His so-called friends that look like characters we will probably never see again have a good laugh. This is because they can take it easy, since Yuki is practically Mr. Clean and has unparalleled cleaning skills. Just then, all the girls arrive late to school as always, but the boys can't do anything about it since they are not granted powers like the girls are. Unlike boys, girls are able to gain powers simply by eating peaches. Yuki points out how useless his life is since all boys are playing life on hard mode from the second they are born. Our boy Yuki finds ways to make himself useful though, as one of his buddies asks him to fix a button on his suit like guys tend to do. Yuki pulls out his super manly sewing kit and fixes it up with lightning speed like a human sewing machine, amazing all his friends. However, the little nerd points out that his sewing skills don't help him get any ladies. Yuki's older sister taught him how to sew because boys are pretty worthless since they don't receive the benefits of the peaches. She taught him well but she was pretty abusive about it as she would choke him straight into unconsciousness if he didn't do it right. Yuki's side character friend wonders about his sister but he is told by the other little nerd that it's a sensitive topic. It's almost time for Yuki to start looking for a career but he begins to wonder if that's all there really is to life. Between having to work a dead end job and all that sewing he does, he will be a rizless dweeb forever. Yuki snaps out of this depressive state of mind and assures himself that there is something more out there. A place where he can make a difference without having to sew a single thing. Just then, the area becomes really foggy and a strong gust of wind pushes him back. When the fog clears, Yuki realizes that it's his worst nightmare. He has appeared in a place called Mato. He begins to freak out and searches for his phone to bring out the Mato instruction manual. Mato refers to an alternate dimension accessible via gateways, also known as doors. These doors suddenly appeared throughout Japan. Damages and injuries sustained as a result of monsters known as Shuki entering their world or civilians accidentally wandering into Mato are referred to as Mato mishaps. This little history lesson is good and all, but what's really important is what he needs to do now. When a civilian finds themselves in Mato, they're supposed to stay wherever they are and wait for the demon defense force to rescue them. The terrified Yuki plans to do just that, but one of these horrifying Shuki appears to attack him. Yuki runs for his life from the monsters that look like they are straight out of bleach, but arrives at a dead end and several more Shuki appear. Yuki determines that he can't sew his way out of this one, so he has the bright idea to throw a rock at the creature. This shockingly accomplishes nothing and just gets it mad. Yuki then imagines what his body would look like after getting sliced up by this thing. He won't be able to sew himself back together, but he explains that he doesn't want his life to end this way. The demon isn't listening to his concerns at all as it's about to destroy him, but just then he is saved by a girl riding on a Shuki. This girl calls him unlucky for getting attacked so fast and initiates a fight with all the other beasts. She slices a bunch of the low anime budget demons in half with her sword, but she sees that the Shuki she was riding just had its arms ripped off. She knew the dumb thing would be too weak, so she continues taking care of business on her own. Her name is Kyoka, and she is the commander of the 7th squadron in the demon defense force. She tells Yuki to stay back, but he makes himself super useful by pointing out that things are getting worse by the second. Kyoka takes control of one of the Shuki by putting a chain around its neck and the two get out of there. They are chased soon after, but Himari, Nei, and Shushu arrive to back up their commander. They report that there are no other survivors, so Nei checks their surroundings again. She finds that a horde of the low effort monsters are approaching quickly, so Kyoka tells them to handle it while she takes the boy to safety. The girls instantly handle business as Himari does her best impression of Mega Man and transforms her hand into some kind of Gatling gun to put a bunch of holes in the demons. Shushu won't be outdone though and shows off her ability to grow into a giant like she's one of the Avengers. It becomes pretty apparent to Yuki that of all the girls that are able to get power from Peaches, these girls are the cream of his crop. Yuki has only heard rumors about the demon defense force but seeing them in action now amazes him. The girls finish up the hollows from Bleach and we see that they found an unconscious boy. They assume that their commander made it back to the dorm already so they decide to go and check if the last site has been cleared before heading home. The little boy wakes up but instead of being grateful for them saving him, he just looks around for his sister. Elsewhere we see that the commander hasn't made it back yet and she is busy reminding Yuki about the most important rule. When a civilian finds themselves in a Mato mishap, they're supposed to keep their mouth shut. 
Just then, they must stop as they come across a girl that Yuki remembers seeing just before going through the gate. This girl is just about to learn an important lesson from gravity, but luckily she is saved by Kyoka. Kyoka's Shuki slave is way too slow, so they have to abandon it, and she begins fighting all the demons chasing them. Yuki bravely protects the girl, but he must be saved as well. Kyoka quickly raises a barrier and tells them not to wet themselves, but the demons are beginning to break through. Things are looking bad even for Kyoka, and she begins to think about how she got stuck with a lousy ability. A look into the past shows some girls gossiping about her. She is known for being strong, but her ability sucks and they are certain she will never be supreme commander. Kyoka is determined to prove those dumb girls wrong and vows to one day rule over all the commanders. Time is running out and she thinks about doing something crazy. She has never tested her ability on a man before, so she has a serious decision to make. She tells Yuki that she needs something from him in order for them to escape, so of course the little dweeb is eager to do whatever it takes to survive. He doesn't get what he expected though, as Kyoka informs him that he's going to be her slave. The process seems like it might be a little risque however, as Shioka tells the little girl to get out of the way and close her eyes. Kyoka explains that if Yuki had enhanced strength, they would have a shot at making it out of there alive. Yuki can't believe that she wants him to fight the demons, but Kyoka manhandles him and reminds him that he said he would do whatever it takes. She then explains that it's time for him to bow down to her. These words hit Yuki like a truck coon, and despite never even having touched the girl before, he reacts on instinct. Yuki holds her finger out to him, and for some strange reason, his instincts tell him to lick it. The second his disgusting tongue touches her probably dirty finger, chains of energy surround him. Immense power bursts out of his body, and Yuki transforms into a crazy looking demon. He looks way more powerful now, and Kyoka is amazed to see that it actually worked. The other girls arrive and are shocked to see that their commander turned him into her slave. Yuki is insanely powerful as he slices right through a demon and things have worked out way better than Kyoka could have imagined. Kyoka mounts him and commands him to show her what he's got. Yuki then starts ripping all the demons to shreds like a boss, flying through the air and slicing right through all of them like they don't even exist. Kyoka throws in some commands for good measure and she is stunned by how fast he is. Kyoka reunites the little siblings, but everyone is startled when the demons start doing some reuniting of their own. The giant lump of demons becomes a huge demon, so Kyoka sends the others home so she can take care of business with Yuki. She commands him to crush the giant, so Yuki bursts right through the little rock it was carrying. He dodges all of its attacks and trims a bit off the top of the demon's body. The thing blows up in a huge way, leaving all the girls that apparently haven't left yet to wonder who in the world this guy is. Kyoka ends her ability and reverts Yuki back to his very average and plain self. Kyoka declines the other girl's offer to return home like a jerk because she needs to have a very important and secret conversation with her new toy. She reveals that he surprised her as she never would have guessed that an average Joe like him had it in him to turn into such a beast. She wants to make his job as her slave a permanent arrangement, but that statement alone makes our boy speechless. Before any of that though, there's an important caveat to her ability. She wasn't kidding as she plants a kiss right on Yuki's face. She pretty unfairly calls him a pervert and explains that this is the price of her ability. Since she is the master, she must, without exception, compensate her slave with a reward. As if that weren't crazy enough, the reward must be one that equals the work her slave does each time he carries out a task. Yuki's heart is pounding out of his chest and he can't believe that his reward was a kiss. Kyoka explains that he worked really hard out there and shockingly offers to give him another kiss. Yuki freaks out as she has given him plenty to dream about already and declines the offer. He does probably the most awkward thing anyone can do in this moment and accidentally hits her in the face. Kyoka sympathizes with him and explains that she wasn't expecting the situation either. When the Shuki were her slaves, they only wanted slices of pork as a reward. Yuki on the other hand is a disgusting pervert and she reveals that in these moments her body moves automatically regardless of how she feels about it. It's the price she must pay for her ability so she plants another kiss on him. Afterwards Yuki makes the dumbest looking face as he is still stunned to have just had his first kiss. Kyoka gets really serious as she explains that if even just one of the Shuki were to appear in the real world there would be dozens of casualties. Her goal is to become Supreme Commander and exterminate the vile creatures for good. The current Supreme Commander is a loser though and far too lenient. With Yuki's help she is sure that she can reach her goal so she insists that he work for her. 
Yuki surprises absolutely no one when he reveals that he isn't good at stuff like sports or academics. All he is confident in is his ability to be a maid and keep a house sparkling clean. That isn't a problem for Kyoka though, as she is all for a dude that knows how to clean. Aside from that though, Yuki showed a lot of bravery when trying to save the girl, even though he was just being a meat shield. Kyoka thinks he isn't too bad for a guy, so Yuki finally finds some courage and declares that he wants to be a hero in Mato. Yuki only has a life of monotony and mediocrity waiting for him in the real world. In this world though, he can turn into a monster that looks like something from a cross between Pokemon and Bleach. For the first time ever, he feels like he can avenge his sister's death. Most importantly though, the little perf says it will all be worth it as long as he gets his reward from Kyoka. Soon after, they go to the Demon Defense Force dorm. Yuki passes through the barrier and prepares to become a prestigious member of the Force. Yuki enters with a completely new outlook on life. He is a totally different man now and he confidently stands before the girls, awaiting his introduction. The girls just wonder who the nerd is though and Kyoka just introduces him as the caretaker. She explains that during battle, he will be her slave, but at the dorm, he is the girl's caretaker. Some of these girls have never even seen a boy before, but Kyoka explains that they are all very skilled fighters. They all have colorful personalities though, so their caretakers don't usually stick around for long. Yuki is the perfect fit though, because he is as dull as it gets, and he is great at cleaning. Yuki is furious since he thought he was going to be on the demon defense force, but Kyoka explains that men are not allowed to join. She instructs the girls to make him feel at home, so they waste no time in telling him to do chores. Yuki can hardly keep up, but Nei is the only nice one among them and tells him that everything will be okay. The others are quick to point out that the little girl has superiority over him, so he better not disobey her. Yuki's dreams of having a meaningful life have been shattered as he goes into a deep depression for having to obey the orders of a child. Things might not be so bad though, as Kyoka kindly welcomes him to the squadron. Sometime later, Yuki proudly finishes up doing his cleaning thing, but thinks about how the scenery doesn't look so great in Mato. Just then, a Shuki that thinks it's being sneaky tries to attack Yuki. The barrier stops the stupid hollow from Bleach, and they arrives to check if he is okay. She explains that the 7th squadron is in Mato's unlucky southwest area. That is why more Shuki appear there than at other dorms. Mato is an alternate dimension that's as big as the city of Tokyo, and it's divided into 8 locations. Each one also has its own demon defense force. Nei considers herself his teacher, but Yuki isn't sure if he can get used to a child being his superior. Yuki ignores that for the moment as he wonders if they should do something about the Shuki that's just been hanging around there awkwardly, but Nei explains that it's just a small fry and they can just ignore it. Himari doesn't agree with her apparently as she goes all Mega Man on the Shuki and lights it up with her Gatling gun. Yuki is upset that she almost hit them, but Himari points out that if she wanted to hit him, he would already be filled with bullets. Himari tells him to get to working on dinner and reminds him that he's only there because of Kyoka. Yuki begins to think that being a caretaker really sucks and he has a strange feeling like he senses someone. That night, everyone raves over Yuki the chef's cooking skills and even the poor attitude Himari wants another serving. He feels great after all the compliments and even keeps a good attitude when they remind him of all his other duties. The dummy gets back to work but finally remembers that he wanted to be a hero, not a handyman. Yuki brings up his concerns about just doing chores all day but Kyoka explains that she will use him in battle when needed. She instructs him to focus on housekeeping until then and when he finally sticks up for himself, Himari threatens to slice his head off. Kyoka acknowledges that the others might be uncomfortable with a male caretaker, but Yuki's really good at cleaning and he is also vital to her ability. She asks that they all try to be nice to him and tells him not to worry since she will rip off his manhood if he does anything wrong. That night, Shushu, who has shrunk to her tiny self, thinks she just caught Yuki spying on one of the girls, so she threatens to tell the commander. Shushu explains that her ability allows her to grow or shrink and she takes an incriminating picture. She was curious about Yuki, so she has been keeping a close eye on him. Yuki tries to clear things up by explaining that he was just cleaning, but she isn't interested in any of his excuses. Yuki assumes that she is trying to blackmail him for money, but she just likes to keep things interesting. She wants him to be her slave, but he tries to explain that he is already a slave. Shushu forces him to clean her room and his attempt at deleting the picture fails. She tells him to do her laundry as well, but that just gives her another opportunity to take a misleading picture. 
While Yuki walks around depressed about being bullied, he finds Kyoka and Himari training outside. Just then, Ashuki appears, and Kyoka uses the opportunity to show Himari how it's done. She absolutely destroys the low-budget anime monster, shocking Yuki and amazing Himari. Yuki can't believe how she insta-killed it, and he realizes that he can never get on her bad side. Nei arrives and reveals she will be leaving with Himari to a meeting, so he will be left with Shushu to protect the dorm. That night, Shushu forces him to give her a massage and reveals that she grew up without a father. She came to Mato looking for excitement, even though it meant risking her life. The two decide to play some video games, but Yuki warns her that he's pretty good. They make a little bet, which Yuki is hesitant to accept at first, but eventually decides that he will win and make her apologize for treating him so poorly. He actually loses every game though, and ends up losing his shirt because of it. Just then, the two must rush outside, as a giant Shuki has appeared to attack the barrier. Yuki thinks they should stay back, but Shushu shows just how big she can get. Yuki does his best to keep up, but these giants are quickly about to fight. This dumb monster tries to battle it out with Shushu, but she easily grabs it and smashes it straight into the ground. Yuki is then amazed when she easily overpowers it. Shushu sends it flying, only to punch it down and crush it beneath her feet. Shushu shrinks down a bit, as being that size is completely exhausting. Just as she celebrates her victory, another giant blob of a monster attacks her. A bunch more Shuki merge with it to make it even bigger, and Shushu quickly realizes that things could get bad if she doesn't end the fight now. She tries to use her ability to grow even more, but it doesn't work for some reason. The monsters eventually grab her so she can't move, and the giant lands a punch. Yuki is completely hopeless and can only watch as the giant monster takes the upper hand with another powerful punch. Yuki wishes he could transform in this moment, but it's impossible without Kyoka. He wishes there was something he could do, and he remembers that he transformed when his lips touched Kyoka's hand. This genius gets the bright idea to kiss something that she owns, so he rushes to the laundry room. Licking her glove fails, but it did start the transformation, so he is on the right track. Shoving his face in her shirt transforms his foot, but he needs something that will give a stronger reaction. He eventually finds her boots, but he really begins to question what this says about him as a person. Things are getting really bad for Shushu outside, so he rushes out there with Kyoka's boot. There's no time left, so he must act now if he really wants to be a hero, even if it means licking a boot. Yuki sadly does just that, and power erupts from his body. Back at the fight, Shushu realizes that she must have pushed herself too far by transforming into her jumbo size. The monster shows no signs of slowing down, but Shushu realizes that her body will transform back to normal size soon. Just then, a partially transformed Yuki rushes towards her and is determined to try his best despite not being at full power. Shushu keeps the thing from moving, giving Yuki the perfect target. He unleashes a powerful kick, absolutely destroying this thing's head and winning the battle. Shushu thinks he was being too reckless by fighting at half power, but Yuki did it because she called him a wimp and told him to stay back before the fight. Afterwards, Kyoka works on fixing up Yuki's body since there are some pretty painful repercussions for forcing a transformation on his body. The others mock him for being out of commission after just a couple minutes of combat, but he points out that he just hasn't learned how to use his power yet. He wonders if they should be fixing the barrier, but Kyoka reveals that barriers protecting important locations have special attributes. So long as the damage is minor, it will repair itself. Yuki realizes that this explains what happened when the Shuki attacked earlier as well. Kyoka gets back to working on our boy's back, but it's super painful, and he wonders if this is his reward for protecting the dorm. Kyoka scolds Shushu for underestimating their opponent and instructs her to help Yuki with his chores as punishment. When they leave though, Shushu reveals that she has even more incriminating photos, so she will continue being his master. Yuki realizes how bad things are getting for him and wonders if he will ever be free. Elsewhere, we see that a barrier gets shattered. Another demon force arrives to find the cause and one of them tells the others to inform their commander. The remaining girl prepares to fight the thing, but realizes that her opponent is no ordinary Shuki. The beast completely ignores her attack to grab the two that were running away, and reveals itself to knock the first girl back. This mega Shuki prepares to eat her, but a mysterious person orders it to stop. 
As this mysterious lady mounts to Shuki, she explains that she can feel Yuki's presence somewhere in Mato, and it's time to pay him a visit. Thanks for watching my recap. Sign up to my free newsletter if you want to show some support to the channel. Link is in the description.